You are listening to MCC Votes and Seats, the podcast series of the Center for Political Science of Matthias Corvinus Collegium. We provide election insights with experts and politicians. On September the 13th, voters elected the 150 members of Slovakia's National Council. We are thrilled to host Dr. Jaroslav Ušiak, Professor and Vice Dean for International and Public Relations at the Matej Bell University in Banska Bystrica. Dear Jaroslav, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. I'm really glad to be here. So as to start, former Prime Minister Robert Fico was given the first mandate to form a government. What domestic or foreign factors might explain the success and the possible return to government of Smer, bearing in mind that Mr. Fico had to resign during the political crisis of 2018? The domestic factors, uh, we can say that it's the nostalgia, memory on the stable governance. Many voters made harbor and nostalgic sentiment uh, for the period when the Smer was at the helm, uh, viewing it as more stable and predictable compared to former governments. A key determinant is the perceiving failure of the previous coalition governments led by Igor Matovich and partially also Eduard Heger. These two administrations faced with challenges such as pandemic, the war in Ukraine, and uh, energy crisis. And although these crises were global in nature, not every nation experienced such a dramatic decline in the popularity of their ruling parties. These failures under Matovich leadership may have spurred a desire for an alternative, even if it means returning to SMEP. Let's say also the economic performance. Some voters may perceive the economic growth and social policies during smear governments as positive, influencing uh, their decision to support the party. Despite his resignation in 2018, Robert Fico remains a popular and influential figure in Slovakia. And his leadership style and social policies appeals to a certain demographic, which may have contributed to a smart electoral success, future capitalizing on the failures of the ruling coalition. The foreign factors, the geopolitical tensions are really important. Amid escalating geopolitical tension between the West and East, Smer, despite its previous pro-Western tendencies, began positioning itself as a bridge between two blocs, advocating for peace and ending military support to Ukraine, and a stance that certainly resonates with some voters. And of course, we don't need to forget about pro-Russian sentiment. The party's approach to foreign policy, especially regarding Russia and Ukraine, could play a part in its return to power. Certain members of SMER and its potential coalition partners like Slovak National Party harbor more pro-Russian views, which could influence Slovak foreign uh, policy direction. So, as you put it, Mr. Fico remained popular no matter how serious criminal charges his party members have faced since 2018. On the other hand, the liberal pro-Western progressive Slovakia took around 18%, which is five points behind Fico's smear party. The big cities and their surroundings, as well as the constituencies abroad, were no doubt won by the liberal PS party. The rivalry of the two parties indicates the um, Slovakian society's polarization Progressive Slovakia declares Slovakia's devotion to Euro-Atlantic institutions. The voters of the youthful, primarily urban political formation, which also enjoys the support of head of state Ms. Chaputova, surely sympathize with uh, European mainstream political thinking. How can the interests of this quite considerable social stratum be represented in the new legislative body? Right now, there are still the negotiation about the future coalition government. Still are open two possibilities. One is represented by the Smer plus and the Slovak National Party. And the other one is represented by the Progressive Slovakia RPS plus Christian Democracy uh, Movement and uh, Sloboda and Solidarita, which is the freedom and solidarity led by Sulik. Which is very important to know. We can see that this rivalry between the progressive Slovakia and Smer reflect the polarization of the Slovak society. But 
As we can see, and you mentioned also the other aspect like LGBT rights or even the climate change, migration, we can talk in that Slovakia is not just polarized, but also fragmented. Every part of the society is focusing more on some aspect of what is crucial for them. But generally, we can find several aspects which is connected with this uh, polarization. Of course, as you mentioned, one of them is really connected with the current war in Ukraine, which we can find that the pro-European Union political parties are more focusing on pro-Western orientation, like there is a huge part of the society which is still have the pro-Russia sentiments. We need to know uh, at the beginning that after the falling down of the communism and then the division of the Czechoslovakia in 1993, Slovakia underwent numerous changes in uh, political orientation, while certain segments of the society were eager for rapid argument with the West and integration into the European and transatlantic structures, other segment held a more conservative stance, the great independence and uh, preservation of Slovak tradition and values. Smer and progressive Slovakia right now represents two contrasting political currents in Slovak politics. While progressive Slovakia is focused on the country's modernization, liberal values, and future integration into the Western structures, Smer can be perceived as a party championing more traditional and social oriented values. And these differences are uh, often manifested issue such migration, uh, social economic policies, but also in the relation with the entities like the European Union and the Russia. Don't forget last but not least, the various cultural and social issues, LGBT rights, migration, secularization also, are perceived differently across different segments of Slovak society, while liberal values may be more popular in certain urban areas, more traditional values may hold sway in some rural or conservative region in Slovakia. The rivalry between the progressive Slovakia and Smer is a manifestation of a broader polarization or fragmentation which is present within the Slovak society. We have a different part of the country. The southern part is focusing on the Hungarian minority. The, the northern part is more conservative. And we can see that the, this urban area are more liberal, uh, the rural areas are more conservative. We don't know what exactly will be the, the, the final government. So here can be the, also the question, how will be the conservative values we present? Generally, I believe that still this topic, like the migration, LGBT, secularization, will be still the topic of Slovak political environment. At the time of recording our podcast, the government formation talks are still ongoing. And you just made a brief reference to HLAS, the party of former Social Democrat Prime Minister Peter Pellegrini, which came in third place on the election and which has found itself in a superposition in the government coalition formation process. Because for their past, they are seen as a natural coalition partner of uh, Fico's Smer and uh, Andrei Danko's nationalist SNS party. However, based on their campaign messages and pro-EU orientation, they might as well line up with PS in an anti fizzo government. How would you describe Mr. Pellegrini's bargaining position? What kind of cards can he play in the government formation game? Yeah, it is a good question. Generally, I don't want to be in his position right now because it's true that he has the crucial position now. But when he will go to the government with Robert Fitzo, he will lead to cannibalizing of uh, his voters by smell. But on the other hand, if they will be going uh, to the coalition with the progressive Slovakia, a lot of his voters don't like it. He had to make a really tough decision. A lot of the current elected member of the parliament within the last party are the former uh, politician 
uh, in smell. So there is also the huge pressure inside of the last party to cooperate it with the smell. Of course, there is a few outside of the former smell party and they are against this type of cooperation. There is the main question. Pellegrini was really, and still is, according to some of the public opinion, he has the popularity about the 40%. So finally, he managed only about the 14 And also some uh, pre-election public opinions give them even less than 14%. So uh, the declining the popularity of uh, Peter Pellegrini should be attributed to various factors. The election campaigns misstep and uh, we can see that the strategic mistakes and ambivalent and unclear statement by Peter Pellegrini was really crucial for, let's say, decision-making process of potential voters. A large portion of Hlas support may have shifted to other parties because particularly if they began to feel that Hlas wasn't robust enough to represent their social interests in parliament or if former Hlas supporters felt that the party no longer represents their values or vision for the country, they could naturally gravitate to where other parties. And let's say that the Robert Fitz was more stronger in social policies. The Smear Party set the electoral campaign's agenda, initiating the new topics, thereby influencing uh, shifts in voter priorities and expectations. The Hlas was not able to set up the agenda. Even the progressive Slovakia was not able to set up the campaign's agenda. So pre-election promises made by Hlas in the run-up to the election may not have resonated with a segment of their voters' base. And voters may eventually opt for a parties that their promises was more presented, especially by Smer. We can see that the losing the popularity also some of the voters took to vote for another party perceived as a better alternative. A lot of, of the Peter Pellegrini's mistake was made during the campaigns and their ambivalent and unclear statements. The people just recognize mostly Peter Pellegrini, not the other politicians, which was running under the last party. Peter Pellegrini was most successful here in uh, Banska Bystrica because he's from Banska Bystrica. This is his base, let's say. The main supporters are from the Banska Bystrica region and uh, from the city. The Hlas and Peter Pellegrini was an option for the voters who was pro-European and pro-Western orientated, but with a strong social emphasis. But on the other hand, Robert Fico spread the narratives which was anti-European or pro-Russian, which he tried to focus on the people, which still is the sentiment in Slovak society, and they are trying to, to find the representation. There is no the average voter. Yeah, uh, because uh, Smer received a lot of votes also in the urban area, also with the high educated people. The main problem was, as I mentioned at the beginning, the, the stable governance, the failures and this different action which was under the Matovic leadership give to people that they will even accept it, Smer, although the Smer faced it, allegation of corruption. Many voters may deem corruption as an invincible aspect of politics, but Smer may have effectively communicated its message, presenting itself as a party capable to addressing of domestic issues and restoring Slovakia's trajectory towards stability of the government. We saw that um, the place of origin of politicians does matter when it comes to persistent voter bases. So the saying, no one can become a king in his home region, does not prevail in Slovakian politics. Let's take a closer look at the map. The Christian Democratic KDH finished first in the Namestovo, Trudošin and Levoča districts 
in Upper Slovakia. So what is the reason for the return of uh, KDH and why is the party popular in the northern parts of the country? The Christian Democratic, after two electoral terms outside of the parliament, uh, has made a comeback to the National Council of the Slovak Republic because of the changes inside of the party. One of the reasons for its success is that they are traditionally strong support in Christian Orava, where in Amestovo they uh, garnered about 30% of the voters and in tradition nearly 21st person. Another significant factor of the pronounced influence of Christian Democratic Chairman Willan Myers in the regional politics because he is the chairman of the pressure of municipality and the Christian Democratic Movement also received a large number of votes in Levocha, Majerski's hometown, where he had previously served as its major. Outside from Orava, Christian Democratic achieved the best result also in Pressure region, where he is the chairman of the municipality. Former PM Igor Matovic's anti-establishment electoral alliance Olano and Friends performed remarkably well in Kezmarok district and achieved good results in other parts of Eastern Slovakia too. Why exactly Kezmarok is the biggest fan of the party that produced the most scandalous and attention-grabbing actions in the campaign? Firstly, there is a lot of speculation about the political corruption. Especially there was the promise of Oliano and France to give everyone who goes to the vote 500 euro to go to the elections. Igor Matovich movements, it's the huge platform. For many years, he includes several platforms inside. This year, the Magyar Sivek platform and uh, Pachivale Roma, which is a quite strong platform inside the Roma community. And achieving the significant success in the Kishmarok district with elite exceeding uh, more than 11% over Smer, while in town of Kishmarok itself, Pizzo Party is most popular. We can suggest that Matovic and his allies had the big success in the villages with a significant uh, Roma community. There was a several articles after the election which was dealing with suspicious on uh, political corruption. But a lot of them mentioned that this Pachivale Romana platform uh, was really strong and made a really good campaign. Uh, inside these Roma minorities. Uh, some of the public promises which give Igor Matovic uh, related with 500 euro per every vote which came to the election, it was just the public promise. It was not something like that they give them after the election. The middle class of the Roma communities start to be very important actor between the voters. They are more engaged. I believe that maybe this is not something uh, which can be repeated once again. The reason for support are more complex, including the potential emancipation of uh, Roma middle class regarding the role of uh, Matovic and especially his allies, uh, Roma Pacivale, which this Roma middle class maybe right now expect uh, to advocating their interest. The reason for the, uh, many of their support is fighting uh, with the corruption and with the, with the smear party. And, but, but general, if there is a part which don't want to participate in the governance, then from my point of view, I'm going to the election and vote for someone because I want that my party will be represented in the government. Personally, I don't understand. There are the people which give the vote to the party, which don't want to be in the power, and they want to be just in the opposition. You mentioned the Roma community and the Magyar Sivek platform, so I believe it's time for us to talk about ethnic parties in Slovakia. The ethnic Hungarian political formation Alianza Sovetsi Alliance won the southern Slovakian districts like Dunajska Streda, Komarno and Rimavska Sobota with a difference of uh, three to four times compared to the second party Smer. The Hungarian alliance once again fell short of jumping the 5% threshold to enter the parliament. 
Around 40% of ethnic Hungarians in Slovakia tend to vote for non-Hungarian parties like PS, Olano and the Smer. Is it the end of ethnicity-based party politics in Slovakia? What do you think about it? We are moving forward from when the, let's say, minority or the, or the national political party play a crucial role. There is a young generation that are more focusing on questions which are connected with the climate changes, with the, with the LGBT question, or, or et cetera, et cetera. The alliance likely representing the Hungarian minority in Slovakia right now. The main problem is they are not, not united. They are trying to focus on their own interests, so they don't have enough votes required to enter into the parliament. I don't want to say that this can suggest a decline in support for part parties focus on ethnic identity. In the current political climate, there seems to be less need for parties exclusively centered on ethnic matters. This may be due to the shift in voters' priorities or the perception that the major parties are capable of representing the interests of all citizens, including minorities. A broader range of issues such increasing support for parties centered on environmental or social matters, as well as those related to the European integration and regional cooperation, are coming to the fore. On the other hand, the minority politics and representation of ethnic groups in parliament are essential for preserving cultural and linguistic diversity. We could see another shift in trends in Slovakian party politics. Just to conclude our adventures in election geography, let's address nationalist far-right political formations. SNS jumped the 5% threshold only in the northwestern districts in the Christian Democratic strongholds. Basically, the far-right Republika party, on the other hand, finished among the first five in the central eastern parts of Slovakia that are primarily Smer leading regions. The popularity of the ultra-nationalist Republika has high in the past six months, the member of European Parliament, Milan Uhrig's party, won't have any parliamentary representation, although their entry into the National Assembly depended on just a few thousand votes. Which parties lured voters away from far-right formations in Slovakia? And uh, what happened to Marian Kotleba's People's Party of Slovakia, Ljudova Strana Nasze Slovensko, that gained 8% on the 2020 parliamentary election? Even after the first success of Kotleba's party, I believe that the 10% is the maximum because many of them was expected that they will be rise. But I don't believe that the success or coming back of the Slovak National Party is connected with the reason that the chairman of the Slovak National Party, Andrei Danko, gave the space on their uh, list of uh, potential member of the parliament to also the different platforms. Except of Andrei Danko, rest of the elected politicians is outside of the Slovak National Party. The nine from ten people are outside, and it's three platforms. One is according to Taraba, one is according to the former television star, Shinkova, and the last one is connected with the Huliak, which is the major of one uh, small city in the middle of the country. These people, not all of them, was formerly in the Marian Kotleba party. The failure of Republika and Kotleba's party, this far-right extremist, was primarily because of their splitting. And for some of the Republik or the Kotleba's voters, uh, seems Republika not enough extremist parties. During the campaign, they lean more towards anti-European and pro-Eastern stance, potentially appealing to a nationalist type of voters, exemplified by the Kisica region, where in the past Kotleba garnered over 13%, and in this election, Uhri, the leader of Republika, secured merely 6%. Kisuce and also stand as one of the stronghold for Republika, also for Smer. Don't forget, <laughs> this is the next, next aspect. 
while the Republika initially tried to change uh, the position from Slovak National Party through its criticism of Smer, Fico and Danko, they appear to be more effective in moving the voters, even in the era where the Republika didn't achieve high percentage. Smer and Slovak National Party uh, performed notably well. Why this happened? Smer, so social democracy under Fico, advocated an anti-European and pro-Eastern stance and more effectively resonated with the nationalist voter type. Uh, the Republic uh, leaders ultimately side with Smer, fearing a victory by progressive Slovakia. From Slovak National Party, we didn't hear demands such as leaving NATO or military neutrality. Instead, Slovak National Party seems to focus more on the notion that Slovakia should be an independent republic without foreign interference. While radical right-wing fraction experienced a decline in voter support, their narratives and messages were to some extent co-opted by mainstream parties like Smer. And we can see that this mainstream political party like Smer, uh, Slovak National Party, are taking the narratives of extremists into their campaigns, which bring that mainstream be closer to the extremists. Before we conclude our most interesting conversation, let me ask, what did you find the most interesting about the election campaign and the actual results of the 13th September legislative election in Slovakia? The result shows that there is still enough people which don't believe this different propaganda narrative which is still spreading over Slovak Facebook and Instagram. This type of fragmentation or popularization of the society is really strong, but there is not final statement which will be the future coalition in Slovakia. And still both of the sides have the potential to create the government. On the point of what I'm focusing on, the using of uh, deep fake videos at the end of the campaign. And we need to be prepared that in, in, in the future they will be using a lot. Dr. Jaroslav Usiak from the Matejda University, we are rather grateful to you for sharing your most thought-provoking views and opinion about the 2023 parliamentary election in Slovakia. It was a privilege to get an insight from a local expert. We will surely keep an eye on the government formation process. We can wait to see the outcome. Dear Jaroslav, Ďakujem pekne, dovidenia. Thank you very much. I hope to see you next time. Thank you for inviting me.